Hi and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to solve the problem remove covered intervals. So in this problem, what you're essentially doing is that you're given a list of intervals and you need to determine how many of those intervals do not overlap with each other. So for example, in this scenario, you can see that you have one through four, three to six, and two to eight. 3 to 6 is completely covered by 2 to 8, which means that there's only two intervals that do not completely overlap each other. So that's why the output is 2. Similarly, here, 2 to 3 is completely covered by 1 to 4, meaning that you only return 1. Let's kind of walk through how we can solve this in an algorithm. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, after you have this 2D array, we're going to want to sort it by those first terms. So we can s sort it by saying 1 to 4, 2 to 8, and 3 to 6. That means that when we iterate now, we only need to check whether the last number is less than the last number of the element before it, because we know that the first element here is greater. And in order for it to be fully enclosed in an interval C to D and A to B, A needs to be greater than C or equal to, and B, needs to be less than or equal to D. So if we sort it by those first elements, then we already have this condition checked off. It just makes our code a lot more easier. So we have it sorted. We know that the first elements are in ascending order. And now all we need to do is iterate. So I'm going to create a variable max, and this is just going to contain the maximum last number. So right now it starts as zero. When we arrive at the first element, we notice that this ending number is greater than the max. So all we need to do is set max equal to four. We're going to create another variable, intervals, that's going to keep track of how many intervals are good. So for example, we're going to start with the length of our array, which is 3. We go to the next element, we have 8. 8 is greater than 4. So we're going to update max again. And we're going to keep interval the same. When we come over to this last element right over here, we notice that 8 is greater than 6, which means that we do not update max. The max remains 8, but we decrease the interval by 1. Because you notice that if the first number is anyways greater because that's how we sorted it, and the second number is less than the maximum, that means this entire interval must have been encompassed somewhere. So that means we return interval, which is 2. So this is how we're going to make our algorithm. Let's go over to the coding editor and try to code it. So what we're going to want to do is we're first going to want to sort our array. And since this is a 2D array, we need to set up a custom sorting algorithm. So there's two scenarios. The first scenario is that the starting index is the same. The second scenario is that they're not the same. So if they are the same, then we're gonna go ahead and just sort it by that last number. So we're gonna say a of one minus a, a b of one. 
Otherwise, we're just going to sort it from the beginning number. If you notice here, this is going to sort it by ascending order of the last number. This is going to sort it by descending of the second number, uh, of the first number. We want the first number to be ascending, so we need to just switch around the order of these variables. So it's going to be b1 minus a1 or a0 minus b0. The next thing we're going to want to do is create our max and interval variables. So max is equal to zero, int interval is equal to intervals.length, and then we're going to go ahead and iterate. And we're going to say if intervals of i of one, remember that's the condition that we're checking right over here, is greater than max, we just set max equal to intervals of i of 1. Otherwise, we're just going to decrease the interval by 1. And then at the end, we're just going to return the interval. If you want to optimize this just a tiny bit more, you can set max equal to the lower bound of the first variable, because you can see that in this example, we just automatically set it. And then here you can just start the counter by one. If we run our code, you notice that it works fine. And if we submit it, you notice that we're also able to get the right answer. So I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next video.